Vlog day 209 hail. Actually, good afternoon. I sort of let myself sleep in this morning because I didn't get to bed till like two or something and I hadn't slept for a couple of days. So I was like, I'll just not set an alarm. That was a bad idea. I hate sleeping in uh, at least past 10 a.m. because it feels like you wasted your day and then it kind of messes with your sleep patterns a little bit and it just doesn't feel great. Also, I didn't eat anything last night. Like I had this bag of Walker's chips that I bought in the train station while I was uh, editing my vlog. That was my dinner. So I'm pretty hungry. The other reason that sleeping in was a bad idea was because I had a bank account appointment, yeah, that I sort of missed by like, I, I woke up right as it was supposed to be ending. So. You know, for those of you who uh, weren't, aren't aware, I was in London yesterday and actually uh, had just crossed the Westminster Bridge right before the attack happened. The first thing I want to say is that my heart and my condolences go out to the families of those who were affected. Um, whether it was the pedestrians who were killed or the police officer who was killed yesterday or all the other people who were injured, my heart goes out to you. And originally I wasn't going to say anything. I don't think that I have much to offer, but um, it, it kind of hit me when I saw a graphic of where the attacker hit. He drove along the stretch that we literally walked across just minutes before and I stopped and took footage right where his uh, car hit the fence and it's pretty crazy to think that we were we were right there big appointment rescheduled for two o'clock so i need to go find food print off something and then go straight back there i don't know it's just crazy when you think about it i'll show you the graphic and then i can show you the overlay of so like the video that i was taking in those spots but i mean really we were there like 30 or 40 minutes before the attack happened i'm not actually sure and as we were walking like you can see like we were walking i stopped right at the base of big ben we moved up a little bit took some more footage there took footage all along the sidewalk that he ran down and then ended up on the other side and it's just it's just crazy to think that it's all about timing and effectively we were just lucky, and that's what makes it different. I haven't been here in a while. It's a madhouse. I thought I understood the usual lunchtime routine. Mm. Apparently, I have no idea what, ah, what's going on. I like that. Lunch always helps. Okay, All right, I gotta print this thing off and get to the bank. I'm a Well, uh, the banker had to leave for some reason. Uh, apparently the appointment that she made for me can't be kept. So we made a new appointment for next week. I'll get a bank account eventually. Also, I think I uh, turned a filter on on my camera accidentally. So, uh, sorry about that. I got a little bit of work done on what is currently titled The Black Knight's Apprentice. What the final title will be, I'm not sure. I was kind of thinking The sh Knight, because at least that would be, you know, somewhat more interesting. Eh, we'll find out. I'm currently walking to meet my buddy Nick, who I haven't seen since the Congo. Last night, Holly and I were talking on the train a little bit about whether or not it's weird to feel kind of detached from an attack, like the one that just happened in Westminster, or if that's normal. And I argue that it's definitely normal. I've been in the middle of like a couple of riots and a couple of other fairly scary things where people were dying. And my reactions have always been different, but the story that it made me think of was during the Paris attacks here, just over a year ago now, my buddy Tom, who's from Israel, was in the 11th during the attacks, and he and my friend Cecilia got out of kind of a stickier area where things were going down. And his reaction was to just basically brush it off and go get a drink. So he took her, and they went and they got a drink. And his girlfriend, of course, the entire time was trying to, freaking out and texting and calling, trying to get him to come back. And, he just didn't see it for a while. But because he comes from a place where attacks like that happen with 
unfortunate frequency. Just kind of trained himself to treat it as another part of life, brush it off and move on. Especially because terrorism ultimately wins if it affects our lives in the long term. Like obviously something like this is gonna affect us for a while. The fact is that the more that we bow to the fear that's instilled by acts of terror, the more that terrorism wins. So I don't know, I'm not an expert to speak on it. And I, I really hope that um, the people of London and the families of those that were directly impacted can grieve, can be well supported by their communities, that we find a good and healthy way to move on without letting it impact us too negatively for the long term. Hope that's fair to say. to Congo with uh, two colleagues, Marie de Nuina, uh, for France 24, which is a French CNN type of network. We went to Congo to do a story on uh, Mercy Ship, yeah. which is where, uh, where you were working. The thing is that these guys actually almost got us kicked out of the country in the end, so that worked out really well. When you're, did you not know that story? When their report came out, it was seen in the Congo, and the family of the president, not the president himself, but some of his family members and some of the surrounding, like, cabinet saw it were super pissed off about it actually because they not because there was anything bad about it because they assumed the president would be pissed off about it and then basically called us and we're like we're gonna we're gonna get rid of you guys and we What's had like well because we said that because we said that the health care there was basically yeah okay. and that they weren't doing what they should be doing <laughs> they, they have no right to say that it wasn't because it was <laughs> We had phone calls from like generals, from the president's daughter, from a number of different people. You got the phone calls. I thankfully did not actually get the phone call directly, but I did get roped directly into everything that happened afterwards. And like, it was nuts. They thought for like a good, for good like maybe three days, there was genuine concern that we were going to get kicked out of the Congo over the France 24 uh, piece. Yeah. 